Hello everyone, it's your favorite how-to video crew on the planet with a freshie. This time our Shop 370Z is getting some lovin' in the form of the new GK Tech Z34 370Z Front Upper Camber Arms, or FUKAs for short, since that's such a fun word. This box is much larger and heavier than the one Zach normally wiggles. Can he still do it with the fervor and precision he is used to? Yes, yes he can. Opening up this heavy bad boy, and you get two awkward boomerangs that will be 100% guaranteed not to come back if you huck now what else is in the box? Let's start with the dust boots. We include them, but you never guess what they do. That's right, they keep the dust out. They are optional as the bearings are PTFE line. Next up is the insert that slips through the bearing on the outside of the Fuka. This connects the J-arm to the upper camber arm. It also has an important threaded bolt, which clamps our thing together, but I'll go over its importance shortly. Next you have the Fuka arm itself, which is currently being tilted and twisted for your viewing pleasure. It comes with some goodies, including stackable shims to adjust the caster, for all you geometry nerds out there, as well as the added luxury of on-car adjustment. The dude that aligns your car may or may not give you a high five for this one, so thank us later. The bearings themselves are also replaceable for service and or you smacking a curb. Up next, you get a treasure map to our hearts. Just kidding, you had us from hello. Also just kidding, it's a set of instructions complete with handy length settings and torque specs. Mmm, torque specs, my favorite. The first step in the process, once you've actually figured out how to remove the wheel by googling it, is to loosen and remove the bolt pinching the ball joint to the Fuka. You may be a super lucky type guy and it comes out with no issue, us being us, it did not and will need a bit more yankage to get it loose. Achieve that by doing the following. Head inwards and loosen and remove the two bolts holding the inside of the arm to the car, which will make it mobile. Whip that sucker around and it should pop out with minimal effort, no pre-working needed for this one, guys. Throwing it back to the high school athletics locker room, let's compare lengths. The best way to start, as with all of our other arms, is to get it to the max safe length of adjustment and wind them back into OEM and or wherever you want them. This way you know you have 100% thread engagement, which, in this case, the max safe length is 106mm measuring from where the lock nut bottoms on the arm to the start of the bearing. The sleeve portion of the extender is made up of 42mm of that measuring from the same spot on the arm to the start of the lock nut above the extender. Now because math, that leaves us with 64mm of thread showing on the heim itself starting from the top of the sleeve under the lock nut to the start of the bearing. Now from here our go-to place for adjusted would be to set that sucker to OEM, cause who knew better than those guys, right? Now feature plug number 3642, Zach can be seen using a large allen head socket to adjust the extended sleeve inwards. Yeah, I know, sick AF, right? Now the all importante measurements for OEM are coming in at 86mm measuring the same way as before, and this is made up from 35mm on the extender and 51mm on the heim, again measured the same way as before. You could also eyeball the length by comparing the arm to OEM, but with all the hot new technology and measuring devices, why would you even do that? Seriously, go buy a ruler. If you are going for that hot boy spelled B-O-I slamber that's slammed with camber look, you can run these at minimum safe adjustment, that being 29mm tip to tail measured like before. This, once again because of maths and or those actually paying attention, gives you 57mm of negative adjustment compared to OEM, which is around 5 degrees of negative camber. You also get 20 millimeters of positive adjustment for those of you that are building a dune buggy for some reason, which translates to about 1.6 degrees of positive for you. There. Hooray. Mass. Keep in mind there are many things that affect camber, so these are just rough figures for you to go by. Also, you may have noticed that your OEM arm came bent from the factory. Thanks, Nissan. It looks like it's at an angle when it's on the bench, but it's straight on the car, while ours look like they're straight on the bench, but are tilted on the car. This is fine and nothing to be alarmed and or ashamed about, as it has ample clearance on both bump and droop. Wow. One more important warning is that these are in fact directional. If you install them backwards because you're one of those I don't need instructions guys, you will risk bindage and or breakage if you do not heed my warning. For demonstration purposes, you can see that the bearing is offset from the inside of the V. This means that the arm would go on the left side of the car, making the offset inner V face towards the front on both sides. Get it? Got it? Good. Now you know annoying is half the battle, yada yada yada, zip zap zoom, moving along. Go ahead and remove the top bolt 
an insert getting it ready to go on the car. Casually bring the arm over to the car and introduce them as to not create an awkward situation with them later on. Now before we actually mate these two together, let's have a word about that radical caster adjustment from earlier. You have the ability to manipulate caster by one degree each direction by stacking the weird Legos we provided differently. So. If you were to put two thick spacers up front and one thin spacer in the rear, you would increase caster. And vice versa, if you were to have two thickies on the rear and one thinny up front, you would decrease caster. Whoa there, Zach. Let's keep her steady there, bud. You know if those fall, you may lose one to the floor gods forever. Anyway, if you want the ever-standard OEM setting, you would do a thick and thin on each side, placing it dead in the middle, which is where we are starting. Respectfully wind the bolts in on each side, and once both are down, tighten and torque to the spec shown here. Now, this is a fantastic time to check for clearance both up and down, so give that arm a few swings each direction. We're checking for any obstructions here, such as the long AF bolts you and your buddies use to install your super cool air horns on the outer wheel well. If you have any obstructions, remove and recheck, as you do not want bindage here, only sadness and heartbreak will ensue. Now we need to bolt up the J arm to the camber arm, and in doing so, we'll need to apply some grip liquid to the bolt that will keep that sucker in place and happy. This again is a warning not to skip this step. Do not skip the grip liquid step. Okay, that's thrice for the math folks out there again. Now go back to the car and install the insert and nut, then tighten them down and lift the arm up and pop the insert into the J-arm, running the bolt through, making sure the divot is aligned with the J-arm bolt, then casually slip the nut on, tighten down, and you guessed it, torque to the settings shown right here. Now head back up to the thread locked top nut, that's four, and tighten down and torque to these settings as well. Again, if you need to do any in-car adjusting, you can use the hex head socket to extend or contract the arms, making everyone happy that are in line behind you at the alignment place, which you are sure to go to after you finish this. Just make sure both sides are adjusted evenly, again, using the newest technology and measuring things. Speaking of adjusting properly, make sure both bearings are not cocked to the left and right, but are indeed running central throughout your suspension's travel. Once our thing is correct and good to go, toss some wrenches on and tighten those lock nuts up, grab a baker's dozen of donuts and share them with your alignment guy since that's where we know you're headed right after this install, right? Once aligned, you're done skis. Damn, these are probably the most attractive dudes in drifting. I'd say even rivaling that legendary guy Frederick Osbo and his epic jawline. If you can't install these, have a pro do it and or reach out to us with any questions you may have. This has been Officer Dan, Johnny Caps, Joshy Josh, and Freak Mode Zach with another GK Tech How-To. Peace.